Welcome to the Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. On today's episode of the Heal Podcast, I have my dear friend and one of the amazing experts from the Heal documentary, Darren Weissman. So let me tell you a little bit about Darren in case you don't know. Darren Weissman, DC, is a chiropractic holistic physician, developer of the amazing Lifeline Technique, and best-selling author of The Power of Infinite Love and Gratitude, Awakening to the Secret Code of Your Mind, The Heart of the Matter, and his children's book, The Daily Lessons of Infinite Love and Gratitude. He is a contributing author of Dr. Masaru Emoto's best-selling book, The Healing Power of Water, which is amazing. Mm. Based upon his expertise of the subconscious mind and holistic health, Dr. Weissman is an international speaker in the field of consciousness. He has been featured in the films Emotion, Making Mankind, Beyond Belief, The Truth, a series on Gaia, and an award-winning documentary, Heal, which is available on Amazon Prime. Dr. Weissman has written for numerous magazines, including Natural Health, The Huffington Post, Prevention, and InStyle. Dr. Darren's passion is to teach people how to intentionally change the emotional programs of the subconscious mind via learning the lifeline technique to enhance their bodies and relationships' natural potential to heal and thrive. Dr. Darren Weissman also works with clients worldwide through the Lifeline Wellness Center with remote Lifeline lessons and sessions. Dr. Darren Weissman also works with clients worldwide through the Lifeline Wellness Center with remote Lifeline sessions. A session that I had the other day. Um, so welcome to the show, thanks, Darren. Thanks for having me here. I'm so grateful. Yeah, it's yeah. great to see you again. Right? I'm just picking it up and... Right where we left off. Infinite love and gratitude, yeah. Infinite love and gratitude. So if you're listening to this, Darren has this amazing, I guess it's like a, a mudra, it's a hand, is that what... My, my cousin, Rob Morgan, who is the first deaf chiropractor to graduate from the Palmer College of Chiropractic. Oh, wow. And so while he was interning with me, we'd be seeing clients all day long. Um, at the end of a day, he stopped and... He went like this to me, and I didn't know what this meant. Uh, I don't speak sign language, but I felt something, and it felt warm. I said, Rob, what is that? He goes, I love you. And I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. I'm like, I could feel something visceral inside based upon just this hand posture. And I said, come over here. One of the things that I do um, as a chiropractor, acupuncturist, just a holistically based chiropractor, is I do kinesiology. I use reflexes as a means to know from the autonomic nervous system where there's imbalances, physically, mentally, spiritually. And so I scanned his system and I found a reflex point, let's just say it's on the liver, that was weak. And I just went, I love you. And the reflex got strong. And I, I, I literally almost lost my lid because I was like, wait a second. I love to adjust people. I love sticking needles in people. I love using nutrients and homeopathics and all different kinds of things, magnetics to support people. But I just energetically, intentionally, when I love you, and his nervous system changed for the positive. And, and that opened me up to a whole bunch that has um, really been monumental to not only impact my own life, but fortunately a real blessing is that I've been able to positively impact other people with what we all know, Kelly, that love heals, joy heals, peace heals, kindness heals. And, um, and there's so much going on in our world right now, mm. so much. We're, uh, we're caught in the fears and the doubts and triggered by aspects of our own lives, our families, and, um, and our mind starts talking to ourselves in other than loving ways. Mm. And so um, it's incredible to be able to use something just easy real simple that makes a tangible shift in the mind body uh, continuum to influence our health and our well-being 
in, in the moment. And for those of you skeptics out there rolling your eyes and saying, oh, love heals or this gesture heals, we're going to get into this in intricate, really complex system, this lifeline technique that has tapped in using love, using the meridian, acupuncture meridians, using like kind of a combination of so many different um, modalities and disciplines that you just created this way to really tap in to the subconscious belief systems and the subconscious mind that is in the body and then with infinite love and gratitude and, and other uh, things, you are able to shift and heal things that we're not even aware are running our show and causing things in our life like, you know, uh, destructive behavior or dis-ease in some areas of our life. So can you tell us how, like, what is the lifeline technique and how did you, how did you download or channel this because I mean I know I, I guess the question is not how did you download like what how, I'm just in awe of how you've been able to access um, this information in people's bodies like tell us about the lifeline technique well I, I, I think to back up a bit is just to appreciate that there's always a underlying conversation going on inside of us and just to go, hey, are, are you having a conversation with your subconscious mind? And are you listening to it? And do you recognize that there's this part of you that is dedicated to surviving and thriving and that your subconscious mind loves you? And that just like right now, just the blink of your eyes and the beat of your heart, that it controls autonomic function of the body that our cells when we're having symptoms when we're in a state of dis-ease or dysfunction we're in, we're in emotional or physical or spiritual pain that that's a conversation that we can if we choose participate in this dialogue and um, the nature of this conversation where we go wow what is the subconscious mind what is the lifeline technique? The lifeline technique is a interpreter of a language that we don't often understand. Mm -hmm. Why do I get migraine headaches? What, where does this irritable bowel syndrome come from? Why do I struggle with anxiety when I wake up in the morning? I didn't even touch the ground. What is it that's causing me to doubt myself? Why do I track certain situations again and again and again? Different face, different name, but it's the same vibe. And and as much as I know better, why am I in this behavior of doing something that I, I know better mm -hmm. what's going on here? And, and then that gives us the ability to back up and go, oh, there is an intelligence that orchestrates the cells and the thoughts inside of our mind. And when we align with it, greatness comes through. Um, confidence comes through peace comes through and when we're in a state of like oh i'm feeling really comfortable in my skin right now we know our immune system and our hormones our digestion and cardiovascular system are always functioning better when that goes on so then when we step back again and we go so when i am triggered and by the way that happens every three to five seconds <laughs> if we pay attention when I am in a reactive state where I'm noticing that I'm having this negative thought or this limiting belief or I'm feeling this resistance that says, you know, these really negative, intense things, to begin a journey of real common sense things. What's the lifeline? Get present. Lifeline helps you get present. What's the lifeline? Uh, observe with compassion and curiosity something that is purely reactive mm. and that's not always easy to do when someone's diagnosed with cancer autoimmune disease neurodegenerative disease bipolar something going on when someone's in that state to observe that with curiosity and compassion you really have to do that intentionally because the natural state of of that experience is one of Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Oh no. 
The sky is falling, understandably. So the lifeline gets us present, helps us to observe where we are before we get to where we're going, helps us to shift judgment into discernment, helps us to live from our heart and be present and be intentional and to focus from our divine self of I am, helps us to create mind medicine through imagination and create new feeling tones and vibrational frequencies that are a new chemistry. And uh, as Joe Dispenza talks about, a whole new neural network uh, forms when we are capable of focusing on where we're going. Meditation helps us with this. This is a specific technology that empowers us to dance with an invisible dance partner. And a dance partner that most people were stepping on its toes and it's stepping on our toes. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's something that I've been teaching for over 20 years. I use it for myself every single day. And I feel grateful that I can um, support other people going through really intense things in their life. And even more, as we were talking before, that I can teach other people how to do it. That it just, I'm not the only one, that it's actually a step-by-step -step process that really is common sense yet at the same time, because it's a unique way that it's put together, there's an aspect of learning that goes along with it. Can you give us an example, because right now it sounds amazing, but it's a little ethereal, or you know, we can't touch it. So can you give us an example of, say you were working with, I mean, I, I know you've helped people heal bipolar. You've helped people heal or improve Parkinson's, am I right? Yeah. You've helped people, I mean, you could speak to, some of the conditions that you've helped, but I'd love for you to kind of walk us through a process, um, whether you're doing it on yourself or with, you yeah. know, Mary sure. with cancer. Right. Um, the first thing is, and it's a, this is really important, the body is designed to heal. So every single cell in our body is intelligently created, innately designed to identify damage repair, replace damaged cells, identify infection, um, regulate itself to different types of environmental changes that go on, emotional changes that go on. This system's, this musical instrument of our beingness is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so incredible. And so in the, in the essence of it, I don't heal people. I am able to hold a space and oftentimes be a part of a team that works with people. My job from the lifeline perspective is I'm a subconscious specialist. I've got a way, I've got a map. It's called the lifeline technique flowchart. So I've got a map that enables me to communicate with this reactive part. I've got a way of using the nervous system so that I know I'm not guessing if I'm really working on a subconscious level or not. So the aspect of like, I was working with a client two days ago who he and his wife were leaving a, um, a, a doctor's appointment for her. She was told that she needs to have an L4, L5, S1 fusion. Um, beautiful person. And she was really stressed out. They got in their car, they're driving, and um, they decide to call someone. And while they're pulling out, a drunk driver hits them. And they roll multiple times. And while she's still on the phone, her friend heard it all. Horrific. I get a call at nine o'clock at night. I'm living, I live in Chicago, she's in Colorado. I get a call and Darren, it's Gail. Um, I need your help. This is an emergency. I'm like, I'm here for you. I was just, I was just like having a late dinner with my kids. I've got teenage yeah. kids. I'm like, I'm here for you. And I instantly was able to go into a moment. She goes, I need to change my energy right now. I'm in shock. Uh, there's multiple bones that are broken in my spine, in my ribs. 
my husband has multiple broken bones in his spine. And I was instantly able to guide her through a process so that she could go through something that's really beyond comprehension wow. and help her to process the trauma instantly. And, um, and we've followed up. I just did my third session with her a couple days ago. And she's a different person. So the PTSD component, we were able to shift that right away. Wow. And the aspect of her body healing, it's going to be a process, but it's healing exponentially. Mm -hmm. And I just did my first session with her husband and, and he's really been in a tough way. She's like, he's like, wow, you're doing so great, Gail. I'd like to work with Darren. And so I did a session with, with him and um, we just made a huge shift. She just sent me a, a video of him hanging out in the sun today and in his happy place. And so, I mean, that was a real life instant that yeah. was this, this week. Um, there, there's people with all kinds of scenarios, whether it be an allergy or whether it be a, a diagnosis of Hashimoto's or whether it be, it's not about the disease, all, that's just the name of something. There is a conversation going on and I guide people through a process that, and I can do this straight away if you want me to do that. I, I can guide just through the first step. And just to create present time consciousness. Okay. And then, then we can talk about some other things as far as where it leads. But the first step of, of anyone who wants to create change is get present. You can't create change if you're stuck in the past. You're not going to create change if you're worried about the future and the shoulda, woulda, could us. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it mean to be really present in the moment? So it's kind of like tuning an instrument before you play it. You know, you want your instrument to sound amazing. We are an instrument. This is a symphony of biology and psychology and spirituality of life. And we, we view it through our senses and in, in our skin, in our, in our core, what it means to be present. So I'll guide you and the listeners, I'll guide you as well. And you can join along. And the key here is the secret sauce of Lifeline is infinite love and gratitude. And I just want to explain that. Yeah, please. Energy. Thoughts are energy. Feelings are energy. Words are energy. Eye contact's energy. Everything is an energy. Everything's a vibration. So the words infinite, just tune into what does that mean? Hmm. The word love. Hmm. The word gratitude. This came from me studying Masaru Moto's work when I discovered it in 2000. Mm. I'm like, wow, what is that? And then I realized in 1998 when Rob went, I love you. I'm like, that's why I felt it because water and we're beautiful bodies of water. Water takes on the vibrational frequency. Yeah. And so these words are influencing the water of our being, influencing our consciousness. It raises the vibrational energetic frequency. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I am um, trained in is I'm a trained acupuncturist and, um, and, and I've studied in depth as well as Ayurvedic medicine. And so there's different aspects of the body that are portals and bridges between the micro and macrocosm of the universe. They bridge what's inside to the stars and beyond. And so I'm going to have you take five fingers like this and just touch it to the crown. And this is a specific point. So if you're just listening, it's like all your five, the tips of your fingers are all touching. So it's like you're almost making like, you know, like a little hand puppet with your hand. Yeah. So all five fingers are touching at their tips and then you're putting it at the top of your head, like you're topping the, you know, touching with your five fingertips um, the crown of your head. Mm -hmm. And this, this point's called Ba Hui in Chinese medicine. And Ba Hui, is the 20th point on the governing channel of uh, the governing acupuncture meridian. That doesn't matter. You don't even have to know that. You just touch your hand there. <laughs> and this activates it. And this is your spirit point. Mm -hmm. Kelly, your spirit's pure love. Our spirits are divine. Our spirits are one. And as you take your hand, you can put your hand. You, if you want to use this mudra, you can. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, you can just put your hand right over your chest and just connect to your heart, right? This aligns your spirit with your body. 
So my right hand with the five fingertips together is on my crown of my head and my left hand is on my heart. And you, he said it's optional whether you do the I love you in sign language, which is infinite love and gratitude, or you can just place your hand over your heart. Right over your chest, right. And what you're doing is just by touching those points, like apps on the phone, you're harmonizing the spirit with every cell in your body that is intelligently designed to heal. And we do this, and this is how we raise the vibration. We do this by saying and feeling infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And breathe. And let it go. And keep your hand on your chest. And now simply lift up the crown. And bring it back. It's like the Macarena. <laughs> and we're opening up the heart. <laughs> So lift your fingers up off your crown and then place them back down. Because the body point was touching first, we're harmonizing the body with the spirit mm. so that we can feel love, we can feel spirit in this present moment. And we do this by saying infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And take a deep breath and let it go. Beautiful. And now time it. Take them both away and bring them back. And just keep them there. This harmonizes, this unifies, this creates a symbiosis where the spirit and body are now one field of pure love. And feel it. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And take a deep breath. And let it go. And relax your arms down. Now we could stop there because we are aware just Notice, just observe how it feels to be present just by doing that, right? But there's, there's four parts to getting connected to the present moment. The second part has to do with the mind-body relationship. We understand that the mind and body are, are intimately related with one another. How do we activate our mind? How do we influence the part of ourselves that is thinking all the time and coming up with ideas and creativity and logic and dreaming and imagining and envisioning. How do we do it? It's simple. We put our hand on our forehead. This activates the mind. And the mind is infinite. Your mind has infinite potential. And as you take your hand with love or flat over your chest, what we do is we harmonize our thoughts with our body. We harmonize our thoughts with our feelings. And we do this by saying infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And take a deep breath. And let it go. And keep your hand on your chest and lift it from the forehead. And bring it back. As we raise vibration. We open the heart. You know what happens when we open the heart? We have clarity of vision. We think clearer when our heart's open. Mm. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And at the same time, take them away and bring them back. And this creates a symbiosis between the mind and the body where there's one infinite field. And this is where we go from having dreams to living them. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And take a deep breath and let it go. And relax your arms and take a deep breath. And let it go. The third part, and this one's fun, is our relationship with nature. Our connection to the seasons, the elements, the cycles, everything on this planet is a reflection of ourselves. And so the more connected we are to nature, the more we awaken our own nature to flow like water, and grow like the trees and shine like the sun. So I like to have fun with this one. So as you take your hands in the I love you posture and you imagine that one of them is the roots of a healthy tree, just plug on in, just go. Okay, just and, down to the ground. Yeah, and feel yourself going deep into the earth. Okay. Supported by mother nature to grow towards the light. And as you place your other hand over the center of your chest, we align every cell in our body with the nature of mother nature. So my right arm is in the I love you, my hand shape, I love you in sign language, and it's straight down, mm -hmm. plugged in mm -hmm. towards the ground. But it's not touching the ground, it's just towards the ground. Yeah. The, but strong. And then my left hand is in the I love you posture on my chest over my heart again. Yeah, and it could be either hand, doesn't matter which one you use. Okay. And just feel yourself growing like a tree towards the light. 
And I invite you to repeat, I am a thriving body. I am a thriving body. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Stay plugged in with Mother Earth. And the hand that's on the chest, bring it to the forehead. And we align our mind with the mind of nature, the mind of water. The mind that flows and accepts and transforms and lets go and does it all over again. You are a beautiful mind of water. And I invite you to repeat, I'm a thriving mind. I'm a thriving mind. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Stay plugged in with Mother Earth and the hand that's on the forehead. All the fingers converge again, including the thumb, just like at the beginning. And we bring it to the crown point. We align our spirit with the spirit of nature, the spirit of sunshine. The sun is always shining. So even if it's cloudy out, the sun's always shining. Guess what? You're always shining. We are always shining, even when life is really tough. And I invite you to repeat, I'm a thriving spirit. I'm a thriving spirit. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And relax your arms and take a deep healing breath. And just feel yourself in this present moment. And the last part of the connection of our tuning of our incredible instrument is our relationship with that vibration that's one with everything. And whatever you call it, divine source, oneness, God, the field, quantum, whatever, whatever it's called, it's beautiful, however you get there. And so I invite you to just open up your palms and appreciate that there's a left and a right, that duality that we often get caught in, that world of opposites that has created so much stress in our world right now. People identify with one side or the other and they forget that there's something that's bridging everything and everyone all the time. Hmm. And that one thing that bridges everything and everyone is love. Fear separates, love connects. So with love, bring them together. All right, so my hands, for those of you just listening, my elbows are bent at my side, my, my palms are open, my fingertips are pointed towards the ceiling, and now they're in the I love you posture, and I'm bringing them kind of towards prayer yep. in front of my heart. Yeah, and you bring it right into the heart. And we take this moment right now to consciously connect with the oneness of our body, the holistic energy of our heart orchestrating the symphony of health and abundance. And I invite you to repeat, I am a body of oneness. I am a body of oneness. Love is one with my body. Love is one with my body. All is well. All is well. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And take a deep breath. Let it go. And bring this up to the forehead as we align our minds with the mind that's divine. The mind that knows that who we are and where we are is exactly who and where we're supposed to be. And this is true for everyone. And I invite you to repeat, I am a mind of oneness. I am a mind of oneness. Love is one with my mind. Love is one with my mind. All is well. All is well. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Come up on top as we align our spirit, the most high vibration. I invite you to repeat, I am a spirit of oneness. I am a spirit of oneness. We are all one. We are all one. And so it is. And so it is. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. And relax your arms and take a deep breath. And let it go. And welcome to the present. So the instrument's tuned now. This was acupuncture without needles. Mm. Right? And just notice how it feels. Just even look through your eyes and hear through your ears and be in your skin right now. What do you notice just about being present right now? I feel, well, like when I do acupuncture, I feel very floaty after. It's almost like I shouldn't drive right after acupuncture because I'm just like, ooh, I feel very relaxed. It like drops me into a deep parasympathetic nervous system. And um, that's how I feel right now. I feel very like kind of floaty but grounded and just very calmly aware cool hyper aware so this this itself just could be a lifeline session you would just be like hey have a great rest of your day <laughs> right but the cool thing now is when we're feeling this depth of connection in presence 
it gives us the opportunity to then dance with that blind spot, with that invisible partner. Now, from this place, we can begin a journey of working on a subconscious level. It's meaningful because sub, like a submarine, it's below the surface. You don't know it's there unless you've got some type of sonar that lets you know it's there or if it shoots a torpedo, then you're aware that it's there, <laughs> yep. right? And oftentimes we're not aware that there's a consciousness, a consciousness imbalance we're not aware until, oh, my shoulder hurts. Oh, I've got a skip in my heart. Oh, torpedo. I'm, that's torpedo. the torpedo. Torpedo. Right. And But th the only reason that that's not really a good analogy is the subconscious mind loves you. Mm. So, like, what kind of love is that? Yeah. I was diagnosed with something horrible. I just went through something like that horrible car accident or, you know, some things. So maybe it's I, a blip on your sonar. Blip. Right. Blip. Right. Sometimes it's a blip or... But more than anything, to just appreciate like what I like to call the gifts and strange wrapping paper that happen in life. Mm -hmm. And everyone is healing from something. Everyone is. It's humbling. I raise both hands. We're all going through this journey of life. We throughout all the chapters, right? So once we're in this present state, Kelly, what's cool is then we can begin a process of creating meaningful change by just observing. Wow, how is my body talking to me? Let me join the conversation. Oh yeah, I've got tightness in my neck. Two. Oh, I've been diagnosed with this. And you can you can observe symptoms that it's almost like a contrast MRI. It's it's highlighting the subconscious mind so that it gets activated. Because the key is there's a lot of really great things that we can do to impart healing. There's amazing things these days. Incredible, incredible. But fundamentally, if we can create a change on a subconscious level, really change the patterns of memories and beliefs that are looping in the subconscious mind, the change has the potential to be epic. I've seen it, I've witnessed it personally and with thousands of people over and over again as far as behavior and biology and changing karma attractor fields, mm -hmm. that we have the ability to do that. So there's a process that we do through observing and asking particular questions that enable us to access that part that we don't even know is going on. Yeah because it's usually from a trauma or an event or something yeah. that's framed a belief system or an unprocessed emotion because it was too painful at the time that it happened. Um, as if you, like for instance, if you hadn't worked with Gail in the moment or shortly thereafter, you know, there'd be a lot of fear and trauma and PTSD that she would have stuffed down into her body, into her system and be stuck energetically looping. Yeah. And we have so many of those events in our so life because we were never taught how to process emotion. A lot from our childhood because we have this lens of being a little child and everything is so scary. So it's heightened because everything is bigger and stronger and louder. And so we have these, these events that are, and emotions that are trapped in our body and it's subconscious. So that's what I love about, you know, as I understood the work of Bruce Lipton and I went on this journey with Heal, you know, to have a modality that actually guides you through it and, right. and, and then the muscle testing, your body doesn't lie, this kinesiology doesn't lie. that accesses the subconscious so it tells you and you have this like, is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because you've, you've, you've road mapped like the emotions that are trapped or the, the, the conditions, like it's so wild how you've just, you've really deciphered the yeah. language of the subconscious in, in the body. Yeah, it's, 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 a, a, it's been a personal healing journey for myself, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that, that drove me to awaken to these, this compilation of multiple different systems and healing modalities and, and models that then come together in a step-by-step -step fashion. There's been a lot that's, that's, that's come into it. And, you know, the, the beauty of it is, is that, you know, we, like inside of every beautiful face, doesn't matter who it is, is a child. There's a, 
there's a child in everyone's beautiful face. There's, there's a little boy, there's a little girl, there's in every human being, you just stop and just like, wow, look for the child in a person. And being in a mother's womb, moment of conception, the developmental stage, birth, first year of life, first seven years of life, the cement's wet. So the imprinting and the conditioning and in these different moments where just information's going in, in those moments where we don't have the tools. We don't have strategies or support systems that can consciously guide us to choose love in the face of fear. It could be subtle, it could be extreme. When that, like Gail, when we don't have that, the subconscious mind says, I'm going to protect you so you can survive. That's what the subconscious does. It protects us for survival only in the present moment. But that looping child that has um, been put in a protective state, that represents in the nervous system the freeze fright. The freeze fright. And, and that, when it's, it, when it's in there, let's just, say it's, let's just say it's two years of age. Two years of age in an environment where uh, the family's going through addiction, financial challenges, what, what loss on some level, moving, the combination of real life things, that to your young memory stays there. It's just, it stays there. And then it learns how to compensate. That child that goes into the surrender, victimized state that forms a bubble around it to evolve itself and to survive even further learns mechanisms of avoidance, of passivity, of don't see me, stay invisible. And that can only stay for so long. And then that subconscious pattern evolves into another layer, another mask, another persona, another identity, where we start forming behavioral, biological, neurological patterns of being a people pleaser or a prover. I'm a doer. I'm a warrior. Do, 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 do. And then we're burnt out biologically and behaviorally in our life that that loops in all of us mm -hmm. until we wake up and on one level or another we wake up at some point it might be two lifetimes in the future or it might be at the moment we die we're like oh god why did i do that why did i keep on doing that <laughs> and you know and so it doesn't have to be like that we can we can wake up in our lives and and we can create change. I like to call Lifeline the fast pass at Disney. If I can get on the ride sooner, I will. It's not about bypassing my emotions. I'm, we go in and we process the emotions. We live with intention. We transform these core limiting belief patterns that have been keeping us in what's called a maladaptive stress reaction. Instead of adapting to the present, I'm reacting as if I'm two. And when I'm two, I don't know I'm two because I think, well, I'm 55. I'm a man at 55, I've got three teenage kids, da 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 da. No, when the two-year-old gets triggered, my brain thinks like the two-year-old, my body functions like the two-year-old, my behavior becomes a two-year-old. I lose verbal ability. When those moments were like, I can't come up with a word, that's because we're driving in this reactive wow. type of pattern. It's wild. So when we observe these things with compassion and curiosity, then it gives us the ability to begin, just begin the process. There's there's a unique way, just like if you were to talk to a, a neurologist that was going to do brain surgery, it's like, well, you know, first I do a cut, a sagittal cut, and da 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 da. Like describing how it's done won't really won't do things for people. the 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 thing more than anything is that there is a way to create real change, real change, on a subconscious level, that directly can influence the healing potential, physically, mentally, and spiritually for a human being. Is it standalone? No. Gail and her husband need medical care. I, I heard Esther Hicks giving an analogy one time. It was so good, and I think it's relevant here. Um, she was talking about just being emotionally intelligent and that you're driving in your car and uh, for whatever reason you go off towards the side and there's these rumble sticks. <laughs> there's rumbles on the, on the side of mm -hmm. the a road and that's to get back in the center and so if you pay attention to the rumble you'll get back in the center 
But if you don't, uh-oh, you're going to end up in the ditch. Those rumbles are your emotions. I feel, I feel fear. I feel insecure. I feel doubt. I feel overwhelmed. I feel frustrated. I feel whatever it might be. If I am able to create a relationship with my emotions that are my feedback system, because emotions are chemicals and chemicals influence neuropeptides, influence the cellular function and the healing of our body. When we can learn to listen to them and process them, which is so much fun, it really is. It really is. And it's not about sitting on, my brother's a psychologist and, and I, psychology is incredible, especially these days. It's a whole other level. Um, it's not about sitting on a couch for 20 years, for sure. There's the real technology of processing emotions. But if we don't know, even know that there's a feedback going on, then we end up in a ditch. And when we're in the ditch, you're not getting out on your own. Now you need a team. And so if someone can have tools for themselves, self-help, self-care. To listen to the rumble. Right. Then every person, it's imperative in our world today especially that every person has tools. And there's all kinds of cool tools. Yeah. Lifeline is one cool tool. Um, once you end up in the ditch, we need all kinds of people on our dream team to support us moving through a diagnosis, through a loss, through a trauma, something that happens, something that doesn't happen, that enables us to get back on the road. And then once again, we got to drive our car. We got to drive our mind versus being driven by it. Uh, I love that analogy because it empowers us to take a new look at what it means to be in the human experience of living from our heart and, and connecting with other people and communicating and being triggered. Oh, wow. We don't even realize I was triggered. I just, I guess I'm just an angry person. I guess I'm just a scared person. I guess I'm just an unworthy person. No, you're not. You're beautiful and amazing. Everyone's incredible. Everyone has a unique light and purpose. And even if you've messed up, there's a way to create change inside. And to me, that's really important in our world today. Absolutely. We have a cancel culture and, a, and just the judgment is flying. It's sad. It's very sad. And it's, it's, you know, everybody's filled with so much of their own pain that their only relief is to judge and, you know, other and, and or fear of being judged, they judging first. I, I was just thinking about this on the way here today. Like, does it feel good when I judge someone else or when someone's judging me and, you know, my life on Instagram or whatever, you know? It's like, what does that get for people? Does it give you some source of sense of false security? And it's really just, you know, it's that projection of these parts of ourselves that we haven't embraced. That's and, the two-year-old. Yeah. That is in that cycle that's thinking that way, feeling that way, speaking that way, and attracting that way. And so when a person does find themselves in the drama trauma types of experiences of life, especially in our world today where it's obvious and social media is a place where that happens more than ever, it's very vulnerable um, to acknowledge the only thing that I can change is myself. And as much as people say, well, it's not about you, it's about them, that's great, that might help for a second, but the pain's still the pain. And when you feel that pain, that's a rumble. And then you can do something with that. And when you learn how to process whatever that's triggering on a subconscious level within oneself, that not only affects how you think about it, feel about it, it changes your attractor field. So like you're able to do this on yourself and you've been able to teach people, which I love. Like a lot of healers I've met or, you know, and I know you say that you're just holding space so that the person can activate the healing mechanism within themselves, which I think is wise. Um, but there's a lot of people that can't duplicate what they do, or it's very hard to teach people to do what they do. So it's, it's awesome that you've taught how many Lifeline a lot. teachers, uh, you a know, lot. hundreds and thousands, Yeah, which is great. So there's, you know, you can, if anybody's intrigued and, and curious about, you know, seeking out what's be beneath the surface, the submarines that <laughs> You're right. um, can, can, can try the Lifeline technique, because I've personally experienced it, and I think it's just so enlightening is you know you as you practice this on yourself i mean like is there is there a level where we're just like can we can we just dig up all the subconscious dirt under the carpet and stop creating more limiting and live happily ever after live happily ever after and stop doing the healing work like at what point you know is there like has your 
you know, frequency of being triggered diminished over time? Like what, explain that to me. Cause I'm like, it's what's a the great, end goal It's here? a great question and it's an important one. The design of this planet and the design of our cells for life to exist is energy, I'll, I'll speak from a cellular perspective. Cells strive towards equilibrium. They strive towards the equilibrium while maintaining disequilibrium. And let me explain. If a cell, and cells have millivolt charges on the outside and the inside of the cell, if they're equal on the inside and the outside, do you know what they call that cell? Dead. <laughs> it's a dead cell. Okay. It, so it requires a little bit of imbalance. It doesn't have to be catastrophic imbalance, right? Too much, too fast, too little for too long. That aspect that activates trauma uh, in our minds and our cells and our bodies and our relationships on the planet. We see it in the weather. There, for life to exist, there must be some level of a stress. Like attention, yeah. Yeah, there's there's good stress, there's you stress, and there's bad stress called distress. And and that that stress isn't the bad guy because one person looks at stress and they go, oh no. And another person goes, bring it on, let's do this thing. So stress is perception, and we perceive what? What we believe. And beliefs are learned. So when we find ourselves in these distressing things that lead to degenerative process, and there's a cycle to this, there's a mechanism to this, we know that there's some level of a core limiting belief that's perpetuating it. Will there ever be, to answer your question, will there ever be where there's no stress? While on this planet, no. There will always be some level of stress, the rumble. And it's just learning about how to be functionally present emotionally, physically, spiritually, especially when it comes to intimacy, to our boundaries, right? To our connections. We each long for meaningful connections within ourselves, with a higher power, with each other. You know, what it means to be in this. Stress is, is, is natural and necessary for, you know, when does the tree grow? When the winds blow and the storms hit. The roots grow deeper, the bark grows thicker. The same thing happens for us. So we have those same enzymes within us when we are enduring our own losses and traumas. And I find, I find this, this is, I want to share this with, with everyone because I find this to be really powerful because the nature of the reactive mind is, am I reacting or am I intuitive? Like sometimes I'm thinking this horrible thought of like, God, I hate this thought about my kid. I hate this thought about what this, the world. I hate this. I don't want to think this thought. And we want it to go away because I don't like the stress of it. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is because we have aspects of our brain and our nervous system and our human consciousness that is, is, is superpower. We have the ability to have clairvoyance and audience and sentience and intuitive capacities of connecting. And when we have those moments where we're like, whoa, I hate this thought. I hate it. It's horrible. Instead of like, oh, it's too stressful. I don't want to deal with it. Put your hand over your heart or put your hand over your heart. Breathe and give yourself permission to feel it. I'm gonna, I, want, I want to teach this one thing. I, I find this to be the most important question ever. Uh, I want everybody on the planet to understand this question. And it's, would you choose to feel this way? Mm. And when you immediately answer no, I would not choose to feel this way. I would not choose this thought. I would not choose this experience. You know you're dealing with your subconscious mind. Anything that's not a choice is a reaction. Anything that's not an action is a subconscious reaction. That's a program. That's a memory that's looping. So as soon as you're in this negative vision of something that's really stressing me out, no, I wouldn't choose this. Cool. What do I choose? Now listen to the divine in your heart and slow down and slow down and slow down and be still as you can, as best you can, and breathe in through your nose, out through your nose, and listen. And, and spirit will speak through your heart. What does my heart desire to feel? I'm joyful. Right now, like as I'm listening, my heart says, Darren, you desire to feel joyful. Yeah, and for love and gratitude, I desire to feel joyful. 
And it, it, will, it will not only change how you feel, but it will change the energy that actually has an attractor field in it. Mm -hmm. So is it intuition or is it reaction? It's probably a combination of both with the subconscious. Do we ever get somewhere where we'll never have pain, fear, and stress? No, pain, fear, stress, uncertainty, having to do the work is part of life. It is, it's part of life. So uh, I'd like to say, yeah, you get to this point and you're never gonna have anything again. No. <laughs> I haven't found it. Different layers. I, different you're right. There's different layers. <laughs> it's different chapters, but same vibration. Um, it's just different, different evolution mm -hmm. versus the revolution. It's uh, we become something more, and we deal with it differently. But now there's just a different aspect of how it communicates through us and to us. Mm -hmm. Based on the state of the world, and I would say that there's since you know the last three years. I don't know if there's a build up before that arguably you know people have their different opinions about it but there seems to be like a higher just baseline level of stress and trauma and tragedy and just like it just yeah. you know even in our weather patterns like everything is everything inflamed our societies are inflamed our like so i'm sure you're seeing more and more manifest physically for people and mentally mental illness like what are you witnessing in your practice and what what is the wisdom that's coming through to you that you can impart on people to navigate this really inflamed time? Yeah, it's a great question. It's so necessary. Um, this COVID experience that we've gone through on this in our entire planet, what a concept that everyone was impacted. Every single person is um, caused, Greg Braden said it so great. He really did. He's like, this is a massive grieving process. Nothing will ever again be the same, and it, and, it, and it won't. And at the same time, as a result, those patterns that have been dormant, those beliefs and the emotions that have been dormant, they have all been pushed to the surface. From the pressure. Yeah, and because people, um, more and more, thank God for HEAL, Thank God for heal. Thank you. Thank you and Adam for, for your passion. More and more people have tools and avenues and consciousness to support them in moving forward. And, and this, this, is, this is, and people are reaching for it and they're hungry for it. They want it so badly. People, want, people don't want to know, can, yeah, can my body heal? Can I move through trauma? Can I move through loss? People don't want to know it's possible. People want to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what the frustrating thing for me was for so long. I'm like, I don't want to hear it anymore. Please show me the way. And that was the inspiration for me really waking up to Lifeline is I, I want to know how to have a practice. Not a perfect. Life is ugly. Life gets ugly. Life happens. It's real. People, people want that. And now more than ever, it has reached a a crescendo of of reaction where the positives and negatives are at such a, a dual component with one another that it's it's it, it you can't really escape it anymore and 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 people are coming in to me and my practice with with everything I'm finding people really are ready to work now I'm finding people are really ready to do the inner work and people want to learn more than ever and um, and and how humbling that is because I've been in practice for over 30 years and so like it's I, I feel humble that like yeah I actually saw this coming so I didn't know how it would happen but I saw it coming that that there would be reach a crescendo and and that crescendo really is now where we're at a tipping point and um, an opportunity for people to learn about themselves what is the mind why does it even matter what is my body how do i optimize it what is relationship intimacy mm -hmm. you know how do i foster uh, um, secure connections and authentic uh, and meaningful um, love uh, in my life people want it and um there's so many great teachers that I'm inspired by in the world and, um, and, and that I, I, I'm, I'm excited to be able to 
help those people that are are eager and, and open. Yeah. yeah, totally. And that's this is you know it's it's never a pretty process, but I feel like it, throughout time and history, like shit's got to get real bad before it, it unites and and uh, the revolution rises up. You know, and whatever that means, I don't know. That's coming through me right now. But it, you know, people are searching for another way because our system, our medical system, um, our healthcare system, you know, we're the, one of the richest countries in the world and we have the worst health statistics and the worst health, you know, um, kind of institution. It's not, a, it's a sick care system as we all know very well. Um, so people are now feeling so disempowered after the last three years that they're taking their power back. And some it's too much and a lot of people are leaving the planet at this time, especially the sensitive ones. So um, it is like, it's that, tipping point it's that crescendo where stuff has to change because people are going to start to demand a new way because it's just so bad it's getting yeah. so bad um so that's why thank god for things like the lifeline technique and yeah and and so many things that are out there and mm -hmm. and 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 it's it's a play on words but it's real going from revolution to evolution and revolution is i'm in this spinny chair and i spin around and i'm in the same place but an evolution is I become something more because I went through an experience. And I love that you brought up the sensitive people. People are more sensitive than ever these days. Everyone is. Mm -hmm. On one level or another, we are all really, really sensitive and people are taking it personally and, and up and arms and we live in a warrior society and you know what it means to observe that level of sensitivity as your rumble and to then begin a process of connecting and observing and discerning and learning how to set intention so that you can raise the vibration and use imagination to create mind medicine within yourself, deeper levels of calm and peace and confidence. And there's no cookie cutter approach. There's no one way for everyone, but there is a way for everyone. There's no one way. And you know, I, I work with people now the only way. I, I, I changed how I work with people. I, I only will work with people um, for six months at a time. I'll, I'll only do that now because the essence of it for me is that I know that there's gotta be a, a real process for change. That's not for everybody. Um, but I have found that in bringing people through their own unique, personal, professional, family lives, that that change occurs by uh, just being guided in a step-by-step -step manner in a consistent, committed, disciplined way that allows the flower to bloom from within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, and like you said, there's no cookie cutter approach and there's no, there's, it, you know, maybe that structure and that discipline and that kind of requirement for people to be committed to the work because it's hard work to look within and to, you know, see what's under the surface um, and painful at times, right? So you got to be committed um, is not for everybody. And that's why it's so, you know, there's such a however many 7.8 billion people on the planet and there's so many different master teachers and modalities. And, and you know, I just love, I just want to continue sharing things like the lifeline um, so that people can resonate and find what works for them. Because, you know, you, you are not going to provide the tool for 7.8 billion people, but, you know, thousands, hundreds, millions, hundreds of thousands, millions, you know, so everybody, I just love that everybody is getting their own, um, your, your expression, your gift to the world. And you've healed thousands of people, helped thousands of people heal, and you've taught other people how to heal themselves and, and go on and, and spread that kind of technique and healing. And it's just, I just encourage everybody to like, you know, get connected with themselves so that they can find what resonates with them because there's so many different, and it's, and it's not just a one-stop shop. Like you said, there's a, there's a team, there's a, there's a buffet of, of things that I, I mean, I personally have had, I've experienced so much and each peels back a different layer and yeah. teaches me and reflects back to myself and connects me more to myself, you know? So, but the lifeline technique is definitely so brilliant. And, and I think one of the hardest things is to access the subconscious mind and to really um, learn how to process emotion, especially stuck old emotion that's been looping for a long time. And, um, and, and to have a modality that reflects back to us 
things that have we've we've we don't even know we've held on to and experiences yeah, we that don't. we don't and and your technique really through muscle testing and then your roadmap the whole you know reflects back to us it's so it was so unbelievable as i was going through the the process like you like said it happened at you know this thing happened seven to eight years old and you found that through muscle testing and then you know it, it landed i think on the th something like isolation and it was like you you hone in on things it's amazing through this language yeah. of the body and the body tells you exactly what's going on or what happened in that person's life because it is all energy and it, it there and it just needed and it needs you know deciphering it needs someone to translate and, and lifeline technique is one translation that is really effective yeah yeah it, it is and I love that you just said that it is hard work it is hard work and some people do and some people don't just imagine I just want you to just every anyone who's listening watching it's like what if you don't do anything though what's gonna happen if you just ignore the rumbles and oh I know that there's technology that's available that could actually influence my health mentally physically emotionally spiritually what if I don't do anything? What if I just, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just gonna just keep doing the same thing. What happens? What's gonna be, what's gonna happen as a result? Individually, family, culture, humanity, what's gonna happen? And um, everyone has to answer that for themselves. And at the same time, like for me, it's like, okay, my passion, my passion is to continue a loving, uh, curious relationship with my subconscious mind. I'm passionate about having a relationship with this invisible part of me that is speaking to me all the time. Right now when we're talking, all the time, to be passionately connected with this part of me. And there's so much. There's so many different things that support this. But as we just delve into this new realm, like, yeah, like there's people that want to go and land on Mars. Let's go inward. Let's 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 discover this this internal realm of of this world that is untapped. The power that emerges as a result of bridging the gap between conscious and subconscious, where there's one part that has not been conscious, and you make that part conscious, you become something that you've always dreamed of and some things you've never imagined that were possible. Human beings are emerging in this way. We are. And it's a beautiful time to be alive. It's an incredible time. There's so much, um, as much as there's so much intensity, there's also so much hope. And that's if we take action and we're open to listening and participating in this. We have the ability to impact um, ourselves and, and the world that we love. Yeah, and you know, and there's going to be a lot of people that don't choose the path that we're doing and don't want to look within and keep Facts. doing what they're doing, and 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 that's just all part of this cacophony of of life, you What's know. That? And to each his own. Um, I just know that the more I kind of uncover and discover and reconnect and heal and do this type of work, um, I can show up and relate to those people in a much more compassionate, present way let them do their thing and and just process and deal with the the crazy things that are happening in the world so you know to each his own and um her own and let them go to mars if that suits them and we'll <laughs> sit here and keep exploring the inner yeah. world it takes a lot of uh, a, a conscious maturity yeah. to rather than engage in the reactive tit for tat kind of energy to be in a place of i'm gonna own my own reaction to this dynamic it takes courage to be you and just logic i can't control them i cannot control right, and right. change like right but it takes courage to show up in the world and want to make a difference to be in the ring and and to really choose to be a shining example of what's possible and it's i always find it fascinating people that throw rocks and and are negative and pessimistic that and so like how amazing and and when it does hurt and and it does because we're human and we're choosing to live with our hearts open um that we have ways that 
we can keep ourselves present mm -hmm. and and then navigate and and create healthy boundaries and just move forward when the light shines even though there's darkness that's all around that that dark starts to change and even if we don't see it directly it does start to change i, I know this to be true I've, I've just witnessed it so many times um doesn't mean that i don't get triggered doesn't mean that i don't have pain i have plenty i've got three teenagers i've gone through a divorce <laughs> different things that have happened in my life that are are real human things yet as we observe these human things for ourselves and we apply the tools we we really can discover what it means to be a, a great human a positive human that adds to humanity yeah yeah and has a positive human experience i mean that's what we're all going for here right <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well thank you um what are you excited about now what are you involved in now that you're uh, beyond the lifeline technique that you want to share well i was introduced to this really cool app we live in a world right now of artificial intelligence is a part of our world right now and people are really at up at arms as far as what that means is is it going to be used for good is it going to be used for bad and and all these projections of what could happen to humanity or not i was introduced to a app called my angels and it's a pure positive platform where people pray for each other people light candles for each other people send positive vibes that rather than it being a place where it's um where there's trolling and negativity and bullying and all different kinds of things that happen on every other platform. This is a pure positive platform and it's just people go there and they're having incredible changes within their own mental health, physical health, life experiences um, based upon people thinking about think people in a positive, loving light. It's, it's really what it's all about. It's called My Angels. I think it's so cool. And uh, it's easy. You go on there. You say you ask for a prayer, and you have thousands of people praying for you all at once. That makes a difference. Yeah. That makes a difference. One person praying is huge. Let alone on a regular basis, when people are sending you positive vibes versus, as we were talking about earlier, negative vibes. That really makes a huge difference in in one's life. I've noticed it for myself and yeah. I've shared it with a lot of people. I think it's really cool what they're doing. And they've, you know, scientifically measured like Lynn McTaggart and um, Joe Dispenza, they, they measure when you're actually sending pure intention, when you're sending healing energy and intention and praying for someone else, you actually have biophysical and, and physiological cha positive changes and biochemical changes right. in your body. So it's, it truly is like, it's been scientifically proven that when you send intention, when groups of people send intention to people, um, it really not only affects the receiver, yeah. but it affects positively the sender. So it is, um, I'm going to check it out, but it is, it's, it's a great way if you're going through something to send, you know, ask for help and then receive energy from strangers all over the world. Um, which again, through Lynn McTaggart and, and Joe Dispenza's and, and many others experiments and scientific you know, research shows that we're all connected and that that group intention really affects the person receiving. And then also, um, like I said, the sender. So um, that's cool. That's a really cool, if you're into that kind of thing, group intention and prayer and receiving love from all over the world, check out my angels. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for being here today. Thank you for the work you do and, and being a positive light on this planet. And um, it was really good to see you. Infinite oh, love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Kelly. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.